The SS Normandy was a French ocean liner built in uh, saint nazaire France, for the French line Compagne Générale Transatlantique. She entered service in 1935 as the largest and fastest passenger ship afloat, crossing the Atlantic in a record 4.14 days, and remains the most powerful steam turbo electric propelled passenger ship ever built. <sighs> According to Wikipedia, her novel design and lavish interiors led many to consider her the greatest of ocean liners. Despite this, she was not a commercial success and relied partly on government subsidies to operate. During service as the flagship of the CGT, she made 139 westbound transatlantic crossings from her home port of La Havre to New York. Normandy held the Blue Ribbon for the fastest uh, transatlantic crossing at several points during her service um, and her career. The Blue Ribbon is an unofficial accolade in the form of a cup given to the passenger liners crossing the Atlantic Ocean in regular service with a record highest speed. During this time, the uh, RMS Queen Mary was her main rival. Ocean liners in the early 20th century had large steerage class compartments where immigrants from Europe could uh, cheaply immigrate to the New World. When the U.S. closed uh, the doors on most immigration in the early 1920s, steamship companies ordered vessels built to serve upper-class tourists instead, particularly Americans who traveled to Europe to escape the prohibition of alcohol. Companies like Cunard and the White Star Line plan to build their own superliners to rival newer ships of the day. Such vessels included the record-breaking German-built Bremen and Europa. The French began to plan their own superliner and on the 29th of October 1932, three years to the day after the stock market crash, Normandy was launched in front of 200,000 spectators. The 27,567 ton hull that slid into the Loire River was the largest launched and the waves washed up the shoreline and over several hundred spectators, but luckily there were no injuries. The boat was christened by Madame Marguerite Le Brun, wife of the President of France. Normandy was outfitted until early 1935 when her interiors, funnel engines and other fittings were put in to make her a working vessel. And finally, in May of 1935, Normandy was ready for trials. The superiority of the hull was immediately visible hardly a wave was created off the bulbous bow. The ship reached a top speed of 32.125 knots or 59.5 kilometers an hour and performed an emergency stop from that speed in 1700 meters or 5,577 feet solely because of the electric motors that turned the propellers. In addition to the hull design, which let her attain speed with far less power than other big liners, Normandy had a turboelectric transmission with turbo generators and electric propulsion motors. CGT chose turboelectric transmissions for the ability to use full power in reverse and because, according to CGT officials, it was quieter and more easily controlled and maintained than traditional steamships. The engine installed was heavier than conventional turbines and slightly less effective at high speed, but allowed all propellers to operate even if one engine was not running. This system also made it possible to eliminate astern turbines. The French, always ahead on technology, had installed an early form of radar to prevent collisions with other vessels or icebergs. 
The luxurious interiors were designed in Art Deco and the streamlined modern style. Any sculptures and wall paintings made allusions to the province of France for which Normandy was named. Drawings and photographs show a series of vast public rooms of great elegance. Normandy's voluminous interior spaces were made possible by having a unique French design. The funnel intake split to pass along the sides of the ship rather than straight upwards. Most of the public space was devoted to the first-class passengers including the dining room, first class lounge, grill room, first class swimming pool, theater, and winter garden. The first class swimming pool featured staggered depths with a shallow training beach for children. The children had a separate dining room decorated by John de Brunhoff, who covered the walls with Babar the Elephant and his entourage. The interiors were filled with grand perspectives, spectacular entranceways, and long winding staircases. First class suites were given unique designs by select French designers. The most luxurious accommodations featured dining rooms, baby grand pianos, multiple bedrooms, and private decks. On her maiden voyage, Normandy reached New York after four days, three hours, and two minutes, taking away the blue ribbon from the Italian liner Rex. This brought great pride to the French, who had not won the distinction before. Under the command of Master Captain René Pugnet, her average on the maiden voyage was around 30 knots, or 56 kilometers an hour. She easily broke the return record on the eastbound trip. Sadly, the Normandy only sailed for four and one half years as the curtain of war was sliding across Europe. Fearing the Germans would take her if she returned to occupied France, Normandy was seized by U.S. authorities at New York and renamed the USS Lafayette. In 1942, the liner caught fire while it was being converted to a troop ship. It capsized to her port side and came to rest on the mud of the Hudson River at Pier 88, the site of the current New York passenger ship terminal. Although salvaged at great expense, restoration was deemed too costly and she was scrapped in October of 1946. A sad end to the Queen of the Seas. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this interesting, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and check out my Patreon. Remember that wearing a mask Side common areas protects others as they protect you. Fair winds, my friends, and stay safe.